Father, we are grateful to you for yet another opportunity to bring your word to your people wherever they are in their homes and any part of the world. We, we ask for your grace. We ask for your presence to envelope our gathering. We ask that, Lord, you will speak on the echoes of our voices and minister to the grace of your people. And I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that as men hear us, that you begin to minister to their heart. You speak into the homes of people. And I pray in the name of Jesus that healing, grace, restoration shall come to people. That faith will begin to rise from within our spirit. That once again will climb up to the mountain of the law. For David said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence come my help, my help come from the Lord God Almighty. We have come to that Mount Zion, the city of the living God. We have come that we may eat of the food that is set on the table by our Lord. Father, bless us and we shall be blessed. Deliver us and we shall be delivered. Watch over our soul and our soul shall find rest with you. We are grateful to you for your mercies. We are grateful to you for your grace. We thank you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, wherever you are, shout a big amen. Come on, wherever you are, shout a big amen. We bless God for today. This morning or these early hours of the day, we want to share briefly God's word with you. I want to talk to you about peace in distressful times. Peace in distressful times. I want, I want to trust that in these times we live in, I said earlier the other day that these are not normal times. These are, these are not the usual days we go to sleep and wake up and it is normal. These are difficult days. These are difficult times. These are distressful times as the Bible will call it in the book of Matthew chapter number 24. That these are times that are distressful. That world leaders are having trouble dealing with a virus that has come to plague our world. The United States, uttermost part of the world, continent of our world, nations all over, United Nations, everywhere there is distress. People are struggling to find answers, answers that only lies with God. Answers and healing and solution that only lies with God. But as long as the world rejects the Prince of Peace, the world will begin and continue to suffer the stress of the times we live in. The only solution to the times we live in is the Lord Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. And if you are one of his own, that I want you to rejoice because our redemption draws now. We give Jesus all the praise and we give him glory in the name of Jesus. So I want to talk to you peace in troubled times that God will continue to give us peace even in these difficult times. I want us to read our scriptures. If your Bible is with you, just open to the book of Psalm number 23 verse number 1 to 4. Psalm number 23 from verse number 1 to 4. Psalm number 23 from verse number 1 to 4 and Hebrews chapter number 13 verse number 20. Let's quickly do that and then we'll continue. Man of God, please read for us. Psalm chapter 23 from the verse 1 down. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Can we read Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 20? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Amen. David was a shepherd boy. He understood the principles 
of being a shepherd. If you know your Bible very well, before his introduction into the scene, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 16, we are told that David was taking care of his father's sheep when the prophet came to the house to anoint the next king. So he understood what it meant to be a shepherd. That a shepherd's desire is to make sure that the sheep are always kept. The shepherd's desire is that any time the sheep goes out, he makes sure they have food, they have still water. He brings them to a place that we call a still water. In other words, God always brings his people to a place that is not plagued with trouble. The Bible said that the wicked kid runs when no man pursues him. He out of his anger, out of his own trouble, he runs away. But as for God, he brings his people to a river that is still. There is no trouble on the water so that the sheep can always drink without fear whatsoever. The context of that scripture David teaches us is about a man or a shepherd whose interest is making sure that the sheep is leading or is guiding. They do not live in fear. They do not live in abject fear, constant fear, not knowing what is going to happen in tomorrow or what's going to happen a day after. God is a God of peace. The Bible calls him the Prince of Peace. He is not a God of trouble. He's not the God that causes people and lead them into trouble times. No, he is a God who always shows up when things are difficult, when trouble times comes. That is when we see the majesty. That's when we see the strength. That is when we see the goodness of God. How can we know our God is mighty when there are no trouble times? How can we know our God is a king of peace when there are no trouble? How can you know your father is strong when there is no battle to fight? So our God, who is the prince of peace, he shows up in trouble times so that every trouble that has come to plague man when man begin to put their trust and confidence in him he shows the way to them so david said my god he speak to us in a language as though he knows the shepherd or the sheep knows the shepherd for themselves he knows he has a relationship with the sheep so he tells us he said that the shepherd or he said my god he is a good shepherd he's not a bad one he's not the one that leads us to a place where there'll be trouble our god is a good god he's a good shepherd. The other day Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I am not waiting for somebody to tell me but Jesus said, I am. I know it myself. I am the good shepherd. I laid down my life for my sheep and I pray today that as we share these words together, Jesus will also be the peace in your heart in this moment, in these times when trouble seems to be plaguing our well. I pray that the Lord Jesus will be that peace in your heart that your heart will not fail in the name of Jesus. The other day Jesus made a profound statement and said, you believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my father's house there are many mansions. Because why? He is the prince of peace. He will bring peace our way. Even in our difficult times. The solution the world is not finding. And the thing that the world is troubling with. I believe that God has the answer. He is the answer to the trouble of the world. If our world leaders can learn to talk on their knees and begin to invite God in our trouble, in our pain. I believe that God will come through for us. These are trouble times. I remember that before the beginning of the month, I remember God told me to read a study about the end time. I really didn't understand why. I expected him to have probably told me, read about an anointing, read about something. But he said, my son, for the whole month of March, I need you to focus about the end time and study about the end time. And thereafter, after a week or so after, then we begin to hear the outbreak of this virus that has come to plague it. But in my study, I remember one of the things that Jesus kept saying and kept repeating in the story about book of Matthew chapter number 24 was difficult times ahead of us. I believe that there are going to be worse situations than we have found ourselves today. There may be times that will be more distressing more than we have now. There may be another virus that is in waiting. There may be another trouble that is in waiting. There may be another challenging time that is waiting. But if we can
can turn our attention and run from the plague and run away from all the troubled times then I believe that in the name of Jesus our God will come through for us he is the creator of the whole world he is the creator of the whole universe he is the creator of all things that pertains to life and godliness and men if we can run to God we can find safety if we can run to God we will find answers if we can run to God we will find safety so in the story we are reading then we said the Lord is my shepherd and because he's my shepherd I shall not be in want even when trouble comes I will not be in trouble the Bible said in the book of Psalm number 27 the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I fear of whom of whom of whom at all shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall I be afraid when trouble comes when the wicked come when evil comes when distressing times comes God said yet he will still be our shepherd and the world as long as the shepherd is with the sheep the sheep has no trouble because the sheep knows our ah, shepherd will take us to a place where we can only find a shepherd we can only find a pastor our shepherd will only lead us to a place when the sun is hot the shepherd will come and guide the sheep and say let us go to the other side where you can find shade oh when they realize the place is dry the shepherd will come and he will carry the sheep and lead them to a place where they can find water for their soul i invite you to the place of god i throw the invitation of god to you wherever you are if you don't know jesus it is time to begin to reconnect your life to him if you don't know god for yourself don't let any pastor know god for you don't let any preacher know god for you you've got to be like david that said the lord is my 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 not dear he said my shepherd i know him myself i pray that you'll be growing in your times in these difficult times i pray that your desire for god and your growing in the things of god will be stronger in these times in the name of jesus what does it mean in the times we are living in in the times we are living in it's also a time that god is sending a signal and a message to the world that i am still in charge this is the thing that god is sending a message that he's sending around the world that i am still in charge i created my own world and i created it for man for the man to live in and make it own world god bless man in the earth but god said god said let man make or dwell and increase and multiply on the face of the earth but the interesting thing is that man has grown in wisdom the bible said in the last day knowledge shall increase and now the men are growing in their knowledge and in their intellect they think that at all we came on our own we can be wiser than god but listen to me the wisdom of man or the foolishness of god is wiser than the wisdom of man and i pray that if your confidence is any doctor if your confidence is any politician if your confidence is any lawyer if your confidence is on some police officer it is time to turn your attention and your confidence in god i heard david said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence come at my help our help is not in the politicians our confidence is not in sanitizers we know i know and in these times i encourage you get a sanitizer and wash your hands as often as it is and observe all the protocol but the interesting thing is that they are not the solution they are not the answer we are looking for the answer we are looking for is the solution to the plague our confidence men are no longer afraid of the second coming of christ but they are afraid of a virus the confidence of men is inside the Tizer. instead of god i pray for you today in the name of jesus that your confidence will not be in the sanitizer a virus will come and one of the virus may come but our confidence is in the law the bible says some trust in chariot others also in horses but you and i our confidence is in the law when plague come and rise and affliction rises as for the law it will continue to keep us so he said although i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil and today i want you to rise and tell somebody you will fear no evil in the difficult time i want you to shout to somebody i will fear no evil i want you to tell another person i will fear no evil i am not afraid i am not afraid of the arrow that fly by 
day. Neither am I afraid of the terror by night. Why? Because he is with me. If God is with us, it doesn't matter what comes our way. The Lord is our strong help. Uh, the Bible said in the book of Psalm number 46 and verse number 1, he is our present help. In time of trouble, it is not the president. Don't blame the president. It is not the world leaders. Don't blame them. It has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with your salvation. These difficult times, the peace we are looking for is only found in one man and not a president and not a sanitizer, but it's in the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and when the righteous run into the name, they find safety. I recommend for you, Jesus. I recommend for you, Jesus. Turn your eyes from men. Take your eyes off men and I pray your attention shall be on God. In the name of Jesus, I read the Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter number 12. He said, wherefore we also are compassed about with so great crowd of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin that easily beset us. Looking unto Jesus. He said we should look unto Jesus. I pray for you today that your attention shall be on Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus that place shall come and go but we shall live. I pray none of you shall die. None shall lose their lives because of the plague. The Lord shall preserve you. He shall keep you. He shall watch over you in the name of Jesus. David said even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am not afraid. When I wake up and I hear another virus, I am not afraid. When I wake up and I hear another misfortune has come, I am not afraid. Whatever comes my way, I am not afraid because he is with us. He is with us. He is with us. I pray for somebody that you will grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your desire for God will grow stronger. Wherever you are, shout a big amen. amen. Stressful times. Listen, I believe that there may be worse times ahead of us because they are only preparing us towards the second coming of Jesus. And Jesus said, When you see these signs, rejoice for your redemption, it draws now. Stop putting your trust in politicians. Because uh, what is the president doing? What is the minister doing? What is this? They have not done enough preparation. It is not in that one. The answer is not in those things. The answer is God. Find safety with God. Our peace can only rest with the Prince of Peace. Stop wasting your time. You see, one of the things that worries me a lot is not the virus, but the fear of knowing you have the virus. It's like the enemy is selling virus. Even though people don't have the virus, but they are afraid than the people who have the virus themselves. I notice that in life, as believers, we are always contending on food things. One on faith and another on fear. At any given time, the believer is fighting these two things. He's always fighting to grow his faith. And he's also fighting to make sure that fear does not creep him. So whilst the enemy keeps introducing fear, and that he keeps making sure you keep listening to the news, you keep hearing the information, and the more you keep hearing them, the fear begins to grip our heart. Yesterday, it was 19. Today, it is 20-something. Tomorrow, it is something, something else. And the moment people begin to hear the news, that, oh, now we have 100 cases, now we have 200 cases, the heart of people begin to melt. But I know if you're a child of God, I want to encourage you, rejoice. Your God will come through for you. God will come through for you. Oh, God will come through for you. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't, don't, don't be worried. God, he knows his own. He knows his own. As for God, even men, they know how to protect that which belongs to them. How much more God? Jesus made a simple statement. He said, you who are evil, when your children come asking for bread, will you give them stones? When they ask for fish, will you give them serpent? He said, those of you who are even evil, you know how to give good gifts to people, your children. How much more? How much more? So God also, he knows his own. And because he knows his own, he will always protect them. I am not afraid. No, I am not afraid. See, if the devil is selling fear, don't buy it. If you go to the supermarket and they are selling fear, don't buy it. The other day somebody was about to cough. 
and the people around him, everybody away, they ran away. But in the past, when the person had sneezed or coughed, we would have said, bless you. But now, the same coughing. People who will not wait for their coughing to even end, land. Ah, Listen. So there are times that you go to the hospital and, and you are beginning to show signs of some infirmity you are not too sure. And you go to the hospital and the doctor looks at you and says that we need to run some tests. Uh, the, the symptoms you are showing, we need to run a test of HIV or hepatitis. You do the test and the next three days come for your results. The hepatitis or the HIV itself that you have is not a problem. But the three days that the doctor looks at you and says, come for the next three days. Imagine when you are home. The next day, the second day, the fear, the torment of the fear. And when they give you the results, you are afraid. Sometimes you even want to go and hide and open. You, you, you want to hide it and open. And they say, oh, you see some pain in your breast. And they say, okay, we need to run a test and see whether you have cancer or you have some. And, and the results was waiting. And that's what the enemy is doing. He's taking advantage of the virus and he's casting fear. Believers are even running away. Believers are afraid. But Jesus sent me here today to talk to every one of you. Be still. Don't fret. Be still. Rest in the arms of God. He will keep you. Oh, he will keep you. He will keep you. God, he will surely keep you. I want to share a few things with you in these distressful times. What must I do? Number one is that you must learn how to grow in your relationship with God. You see, difficult comes and goes. Storms come and go. They don't stay with us. But these times, to have peace in this distressful time, one of the things you must have is that you must learn to develop a relationship with God. These are the times that whilst you are home, it is not time to watch an Indian man speaking to you. It is not time to watch Esmeralda. It is time to now begin to draw closer to God. People, it is time to draw closer to God. He said, draw closer to me and I will draw closer to you. Peace. Peace be still. It only comes to people. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. And he was talking about a relationship. In Daniel chapter number 11, verse number 32. Know God yourself. Learn to know him. Know him. Spend time to build your relationship with him. As I read for us. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that know their God. But the people that know their God shall be strong. They will be strong. Plague will come. They will still be standing. The storms will come. They will be standing. The issues of life will come. But because they know their God and their God knows them, they will still be standing. Honey, it is not about going to church. Sweetie, it is not about just being in church and being fellowship, but knowing God yourself. This is the time to have peace, to have rest. Is that I just know that my father is watching me. Can you imagine if your friend come boxing, you come in to fight you, and you just know your father is uh, Tyson Fury. And he's just sitting where the fight is coming to take place. You are sitting there. When the guy hits you as hard as it is, you just know that daddy, Tyson, will wake up. And if it goes beyond the natural, he will give that guy one blow. See, enough of what the enemy is doing. Jesus will rise up. He will defend his own. He will protect his own. He will put a mark on his people. He will place a sign on his people and warn the enemy. These are my covenant children. These are my people. He said, touch not my anointed. So I believe that the Lord he is going to place a mark of blood upon every one of us who are his own. And as we are waiting for that time, I believe that the Lord, he will preserve us from the acts of the evil one. I pray today in the name of Jesus. If you are a child of God, wherever you are hearing us from I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that no evil shall come not that dwelling, no plague shall come not that dwelling, the thing that God placed on the evil one, the thing that he allows to come on the evil one he shall not come out, why we are a covenant children, we have a covenant with our father and by reason of the covenant I will keep my own, he said I will even contend with them that contend against us so hear me, if you are home wherever you are, it is time to learn how to build a relationship if the Lord is your shepherd then you've got to know your shepherd well if you are a sheep then you've got to hear the voice of the shepherd these are times to draw closer to God because worse things will come 
So the first thing people need to learn, learn to grow your relationship with God. John chapter 17, verse number 3. Learn. Grow in your work with God. Grow in your work with God. John chapter 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. That they may know thee. See, we, we are not afraid. You see, the believers should not be afraid. When we walk through all these things that is going on, don't, don't panic. Don't, don't panic. Observe the protocol, but don't panic. That's what the enemy wants. He just wants to take our joy away from us. The Bible said that the joy of God is our strength. If the enemy takes our joy away, we become very weak. So grow, number two. If the person is not born again, he's got to give his life to Christ. First John chapter number 5, verse 4. Psalm number 145, verse 20. You see, these difficult times, the peace is only with Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, it is time to do that. Man of God, read for us. First John chapter 5, the verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, but whoever is born of God, overcometh the world. He overcomes this world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes this whole world. Even our faith. Even our faith. Even our faith. This is the victory. Psalm 145 verse 20. Even our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Whatsoever is born of God. He overcomes the world. So we walk through this life. Issues are coming. But whoever is born of God. Everyone that is born of God. He overcomes it. We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. We are not people that do not know our God. But we know our God. And because we know our God. We are more than conquerors. He said they overcome the world. You see today you are laughing at believers. Today they say Christians are making noise. Uh, some few weeks ago people were saying complaining. Uh, Christians are making noise. Now that the virus came into the world. Now they are running to the church. The church will pray. So the world actually know that the church has something. But everyone that is born of God, he overcomes the world. He overcomes the world. He overcomes the world. Now I pray in the name of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I throw an invitation to you. If you want to overcome this virus and any plague that will come even in the future, it only rests with Jesus. The mountains shall fall. The heavens shall come down. But our God still remains the same. If you don't know him, we want to introduce you to him. If you don't know Jesus, he draw now to him and he will draw now. Also read for us. Psalm 145, the verse 20. The Lord preserved all them that love him. As for God, he will only preserve them that, that love, love him. him. But all the wicked will destroy. Oh, he will preserve the church. He will preserve the church. We will not have any church member die out of this virus. We speak into the atmosphere and I decree in the name of Jesus, no church member will suffer this affliction. No true believer will suffer this affliction. He said he shall preserve them that love him. He will preserve them that are his. And I pray that if you are one of his own, the Lord shall preserve you. If you are one of his own, I pray that the Lord shall preserve you. I decree your home saver. I decree your children saver. I decree your husband, your wife saver. I speak over your family, over your parents and over your children. And I decree that the Lord shall preserve every one of them. In the name of Jesus, I call the heavens to reckon upon thee. I call the heavens to watch over thee. I call the heavens, the angels of God. I activate the voice of the blood over thee. And I decree every one of you shall be preserved. I speak in the name of Jesus. Ghana shall be preserved. I speak into the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. Every demon behind the plague will suspend their rulership. And I decree out of this nation. In the name of Jesus. We raise an altar of prayer. We raise an altar of righteousness we raise an altar and by the altar we activate the voice of the law and by the voice of God we decree every place stop we speak against it I prophesy in the atmosphere
us here. In the name of Jesus, a man shall not come and we shall ever hear this plague any longer. I decree in the name of Jesus, this virus shall return. It shall return the same way it came. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, a man by this time, the word will not gather to speak about this again. I decree it is over. It is over. We lift up prayer before heaven and we ask the Lord for the sake of the righteous. The other day Moses uh, uh, he engaged God. Abraham engaged God and he said, will you allow all the people to die? Even if the righteous are there. God said, no, if I find 15, no. So the saints are preserving the world. We are the one that are preserving the Then they hate us. But what they don't know is that we are the one that is preserving the world. And because we are in the world, we ask also every place shall end. I decree every place shall end. In the name of Jesus, it will not happen again. I speak peace into the atmosphere, into the heart. I decree let your heart not be troubled. Let your heart not be troubled because God is on our side. If you don't know Jesus, he said, as for the wicked, he will throw them out. The wicked, they don't have the covering of God. But as for the righteous, he preserved them. I'm afraid. God told me, he said, my son, just be still. The third thing, if you want to have peace in this distressful time, is just be still. Rest in the arms of God. You see, there are things as human we have no control. We cannot control. But there is a man up there. His name is El Shaddai. He controls the sun. He's the one who determines who rises up and who doesn't. Who goes down. And the Bible says that by him all actions are weighed. He lift one and bring down the other. Be still. He said, don't panic. Yesterday, we were told that because the government is planning to fumigate market. Market women were in business. Oh, Sister Caro is making people money. Making people have money. The tomato they used to sell two CD yesterday, they were selling it five CD. I, I was told that the yam tuba they used to sell five CD was like 15 CD. <laughs> People are in business. <laughs> they are not even afraid of the sickness. They are interested. In what if, sister, if you get the money, you get the millions of CD out of that one and on your way, the money the person gave to you is infected. What will you do? <laughs> We are not worried about that one. We are worried about how to make money. Sanitizer that was sold for two CD is now 12 CD. The one that used to be sold for 12 CD is now around 200, 300. People are just making money. When demand exceeds supply, price goes up. We understand. But one of these days, that money cannot cure that infirmity. That disease, that sickness, that money, your soul. Jesus said, if what will, what will it profit a man? If he wins the whole world, he has money for the, for the world or for everything we are looking for. And we lose our soul. What shall it profit us? Woman of God, what shall it profit us? Man of God, what shall it profit us? You can have the money today, tomorrow. So God told me, he said, my son, in these times, keep quiet. Stop watching the news. That is not, the world have their problem. It has nothing to do with you. Jesus said, you are in the world, but not of the world. So the world has their own problem. Why is the church worried? Be still. Just be still. Psalm 46 verse 10. John 17 verse 16. Just be still. Man of God, read for me. Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10. Verse 10. Be still. Be still. And know that I am God. And know, and know. In other words, don't panic. Will your child, just imagine one day you wake up and your son or your daughter wakes up and say, uh, uh, Black or be please, are you my father? Even the child, he cannot ask. His own mother or father, whether he, he, he knows, the child knows. Even if he doesn't know, he knows. This man who sleeps with us and wakes up with us, that is my father. So Jesus said, be still, be still. Honey, whatever you can hear us from, please don't fret. Don't panic. 
be still. He that watches over Israel, he will watch over us also. He that keepeth the city, he will keep us also. He that watches over his people, he never sleeps, never slumbers. He is the God we have run to. Please don't panic. God sent me to tell you, be still. I was asking him, Lord, so what should we do? He said, my son, what is your problem? Just be still. <laughs> he said, just be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Just be still. Be still. Wherever you can hear us from, please be still. This one also shall pass away. If Jesus said heaven shall pass away, then what is virus? The virus it will pass by two weeks' time, it is gone. By a month's time, it is out of this nation. It will remain. It will remain. <laughs> Brother Ebola came to Africa. He came. We, he didn't announce his coming. He started killing people. And when he was going, he didn't announce anybody. He also, I believe also that this virus will disappear for no reason. Not because of any medicine, not because of any cure. But God wants to tell the world I hold the keys of the bottomless peace. And I have the keys of David. And it is the church I am waiting for. In the book of Micah, chapter number four. Verse number one, in the last days, the mountain of the law, it shall be exalted above all the hills of Jerusalem. And men shall say, let us run to that place because they will teach us the way of, that is the place we are coming to. I believe God is giving voice to the church. I believe that God in preparing us for the bride. I believe after the bridegroom, I believe that he's giving the church a voice one more time and will rise up as in the days of the apostle. He will endow his people with power and authority and we shall go out into the world and break every infirmity and bring healing to God's people before the arriving of the son of the living God and I pray that you shall be one of them I pray that you will not lose your salvation so be still and know just know I hear people are doing some concussion just the virus hasn't even got into their area Others are taking Akwateshi just to protect. If they can't get sanitizer, Akwateshi self sanitizer, honey, it will save you. Others are going through some herbalists to get some funny, funny things for them to drink. Oh, it will save you. There is only one place Jesus, the Son of the Living God. And He says, Just be still, just rest, my son, don't worry. I shook somebody and the person said, hey, you need to sanitize your hand. And I said, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. And the person was so offended. Why? You want to give me the virus? And I was so offended. And just when I was going to talk, God said, my son, keep quiet. Be still. The world has their problem. You are not in the world. You are in the world, but you are not of it. So if the world has their own problem, what is that got to do with you? Honey, what is your problem? <laughs> also, we read for us John chapter number 16. Verse number 33. <laughs> uh, Psalm number 119, verse 76. John chapter 16, verse 33. 33. These things I have spoken unto you. Jesus said, my children, these things I am telling you. That in me. In me. You might have peace. You will have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Hey, this world you see there. This world that you are jumping. I'm surprised that the stars are even disappearing. The people they call celebrities, they are even they themselves they are quarantining themselves. <laughs> oh, where are the stars? The stars are in the church. Where are the celebrities? They are all run away because it is not of him that will let or run it. It is God that showeth mercy. You may be a star today. A virus is waiting. Honey, it is not a star. Run, run to Jesus. Run. The applause of men will have nothing to do with your soul. Run, run. Run. Happy. He said, What in this world? I am telling you that there are days coming, but I'm telling you to be comforted in me. For in me you have peace. But in the world, also read for us. In the world, you shall have tribulation. In this world, you have tribulation, troubles. But be of good be cheer. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome them. Man of God. God says that in me you will have peace. Not in the politician. It is in Christ. It is in God. 
you have peace. I sleep and I'm not worried about virus. No, I am worried about eternity. And when Jesus show up, I am just waiting for the day of my redemption. The day he will show up. And the Bible said that the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who will be living by then, we shall be caught up in the heaven with him. How glorious it will be that day. The way virus is making stars run away. I look forward to that glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus. Where would the stars be? Where would the celebrities be? You better be a star in Christ Jesus. He's looking for people. The days we live in, they are not good times. Please fear the Lord and obey his commandment. Psalm 119 verse 76. Psalm, Psalm 119 verse 76. Let I pray thee, thy mercy for kindness be for my comfort. Let it be for my comfort. According to thy word unto thy servant. According to thy word unto thy servant. His mercy, his kindness will rest upon us. Number four. What must I do? He told me, just trust. Just trust me. Trust God. That's the last thing I want to share and then I'll be out of this place. Is that trust God. Trust Him. You see, there's one thing going around with a military man behind you and there's one thing trusting that that man is able to protect you. Just trust Him. There is one thing that surprised me or one thing that God said that got me excited this morning was that there is nothing that happens outside my watch. Everything that happens, I am just watching it. I'm looking. In fact, I hold the whole world like a drop of water in a bucket. So nothing happens outside God. He is the creator of the whole universe. Is there anything that ever happens without God knowing it? No. I asked him, Daddy, please. So this thing that is happening, what should we do? Say, my friend, the world has their problem. What has that got to do with you? <laughs> oh. It's good to serve God. It's good to serve God. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. He will do what He has said. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Psalm 112, verse 7. And Isaiah 26, verse 3. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, from the verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Honey, it, it is not, don't, don't trust God because virus has come today. People are becoming, let's go and pray. I hear politicians say, hey, let the church pray, let the church pray. And while the church is praying, they are eating. Ha! Let's fast. We are fasting, they are eating. They are eating somewhere. Hey, master. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't trust the magician. Don't trust the fetish priest. Politicians, I speak to this nation and I speak to our politicians. Our confidence should not be the fetish priest, that Buddhist, that, that Hare Krishna, that is that satanic person. Our confidence, let the foundation of this nation be built on Christ Jesus. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Uh huh. And lean not on thy own understanding. Don't depend on your own technical abilities. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Yeah, the doctors who fail. All your ways, acknowledge him. Let's go on our knees as a nation. And let's tell God, we messed up. We missed it. Because in the past, he has always kept us. In the past, he has protected and preserved us. When Ebola and all manner of infirmity came, he never came to Ghana. What has happened? We failed. We missed it. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't be calling expert. There are people who call expert. Expert. Doctors, scientists are trying to, in the past one month or two months, they've been trying. It's just not working. Can't you see the signs that it has nothing to do with your wisdom? For the wisdom of this world will perish. Trust God. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge, acknowledge him. him. And he shall direct thy path. And God will just tell us, my people, just sing praise for me. And this virus will be gone. <laughs> Psalm 112 verse 7. 
He shall not be afraid of the evil he tidings. He shall not be afraid of what? Evil tidings. Evil deeds, evil tidings, evil things that are coming. The righteous, he shall not be afraid. What will he do? He just needs to trust the Lord. His heart is fixed. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. <laughs> trust him. Trust him. Hey. His heart is fixed on him. Trust in him. Do you really trust God? Or you, 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 you behave like the one that says that there are some things that God cannot do. And, and you maybe you know sometimes I hear people say that some things are some things it is human. And you maybe say, hey, hey, trust the Lord with all the heart. I would prefer to trust God for the food I eat. I prefer to trust God for the water I drink, for the dress I wear, for every single thing about my work with God. I just trust Him. I don't dep I don't even know anything. <laughs> I only know. There was a man who came, died, shed his precious blood for me, saved me and my family. And that is the only thing I know. He says what? His heart is fixed on him. In the midst of this, tomorrow people will be going to work and will be afraid. Especially when you have to sit in trotro. Your heart will just, you, you just don't know who is sitting next to you. And for some people, they won't even go at all. Uh, 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 some people, they will call their bosses and say, um, please, um, 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 I'm coughing. And because they say, I'm coughing, they say, okay, stay home, don't come. Others will take advantage of the moment and just be messing up. Oh, <laughs> His heart is fixed on him. His heart is fixed on him. I pray for you, wherever you are, set your heart on God, not on man. See, and I'll be talking about it probably in the next sessions as we engage you. This word we'll see now. The word, is, it has its own problem. But Jesus said, even though you are living in the world, but you are living in another world within this world. And this world you are living in is different. So when the other world have their own problem, we live in Ghana. We don't have snow here. We have only two seasons. Rainy season and dry season. Hamatan. So one day if you wake up and you see the snow falling, won't you be afraid? You'll be scared. So if the Americans in December and Canadians and the Finnish people and all these people are complaining in November, December because of the snow. If I live in Boligatanga, what, what has that got to do with me? When the sun is dry, when the atmosphere is very dry, around the same time, what it means is that if I'm in Ghana, I should not worry about events that is in the other world. So if I am in the kingdom of God, I should not be worried about the problems that is in another world. All I need to do is that Fix your heart on God. Fix your heart on God. Isaiah 26, verse number 3. And Psalm number 125, and I'll be done. Isaiah 26, the verse 3. Uh -huh. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. He shall keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Whose mind is fixed on him. Because he trusts in thee. Oh, oh. Also, <laughs> read it again. Read it again for me. Thou will keep him in Jesus, perfect peace. You will keep your children in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on When this. we set our mind, our heart, everything about us, when we give everything to him, when we set our burdens and place it on him. Because he trusted in thee. Because he trusted in him. God said that in these troubled times, I should tell you, trust him. Just trust him. Please trust him. Don't panic. Trust God to take you and return with you. The other day I observed an event that, that moved me and taught me a lesson. A fetish priest woke up at the middle of the night, 12 midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and goes to the cemetery to perform a ritual. We're standing by the junction, waiting for a vehicle at 1 o'clock. We're, we're all scared. Praying, Father, bring the driver, bring us a vehicle. And the fetish priest pass us or walk past by us. And then he goes to the cemetery and he's not afraid. And he goes and comes back. And we're still there. We were shivering in our shoes. 
<laughs> and I learned a lesson. Why was the fetish priest not afraid? Because he knows that the gods are with him. Even the fetish priest, he knows that his gods, even the idols, they are with him. So that even when you go to the cemetery and any ghost whatsoever, spirit shows up, the demons that are with him, they will protect him. How much more God? He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is set on him because he trusts him. Read that scripture for me and I will be out of this place. What a peace we forfeit or because we do not carry our burdens to him. Let's read Psalm 125. Psalm 125 from the verse 1. They that trust in the Lord. They that trust in the Lord. Shall be as Mount Zion. They shall be as Mount Zion. Which cannot be moved. It cannot be moved. But abided forever. Hey, they shall abide forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem. Just as Jerusalem is surrounded with mountains. So the Lord is round about his Jehovah people. Jehovah God. So when I sit in the trotro, he is surrounding me. He's just there. <laughs> when I sit by the fetish priest, I'm not afraid. When I sit and I go out and I'm going to the market, I'm not worried about who has virus and who doesn't. Why? He's with me. <laughs> his rod and his staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The Bible said, it shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of living waters. I pray for somebody that is hearing us. I pray that if your confidence and your trust in God is on low current, I pray the Lord increase your grace. I pray for grace for everyone. In the name of Jesus, I pray the grace to trust God. I I pray the grace to trust God. I pray for grace to trust God. In the name of Jesus, I ask the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I heard the word of David in Psalm number 121. He said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. He said, He shall not command the sea or the sun or the moon to smite me by day or the night. No, he shall not. He that keepeth Israel, he will keep us also. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, that your soul will be comforted, your heart will be comforted. Nothing can take a whole God out of your heart. I pray in the name of Jesus, hold on to the confessions of your faith. I pray, honey, don't give up. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not be afraid. Don't be afraid, don't panic. The Lord is with us, the Lord is with us. And if God be for us, and if God be for us, who can be against us? I hear the word say, My children. Rejoice for the hour of redemption draw now. I hear the Lord say, Rejoice for I will preserve my people. I will watch over my people and I will preserve them. I pray in the name of Jesus when the Lord stand his hand of salvation. I pray in the name of Jesus he will bring that upon you and he will preserve your life. I speak in the name of Jesus as the servant of the Lord. This morning I release grace upon you. I release grace upon you. I release the covering of the Lord upon you. I ask the name of Jesus to be a shield around you. The Bible said that, oh God, that a shield around us. You are shield for us. I pray the Lord shall be a shield around you. In the name of Jesus, you shall not be afraid. You shall not be afraid. You shall not be afraid. I speak in the name of Jesus. When you walk, may the Lord walk with you. I pray when you go out of the city, I pray the Lord will go with you. I activate the blood of Jesus. In the book of Exodus, the Bible said the Lord came to the people and told them, get a lamb and mark it and kill it and take the blood and then dip it in the blood or pick a nice shop and dip it in the blood and mark the doorpost of my people. As for the angel of death, he will come. He will walk in the land. An evil place shall come into the city. An evil place shall come to town. But when they come, there will be a mark. There are some people who know me and those people, there will be a mark on the adopters. I mark everyone with the blood. I speak in the atmosphere and I activate the voice of the blood upon every one of you. I decree you will not be subject. You will not be a victim. I pray you will not be a victim. I ask the Lord in the name of Jesus. You shall not be a victim. I ask the Lord to preserve you.
angel in the name of Jesus. Just like the angel came, he took the wicked and preserved the righteous. I pray your life shall be preserved. I release angels into your homes. I release the power of God into your homes. Any problem you have, any part of your body, I release the healing power in the name of Jesus. I release healing. Receive life in the name of Jesus. And if there be anybody that has been affected, I stand in the name of Jesus and in union with Christ. And I activate the blood to speak for you in the name of Jesus. I speak against diabetes. I speak high blood pressure. Any manner of infirmity that is prone to any one of you receiving that infirmity, I speak against it in the name of Jesus. I decree you are healed. The Bible said by his stripes, I will heal. Ananias Sunemekaya. Ragondini miasa, ala kadema rose ne mekapa. Yeah, isani mianta. Ragondi iga susa, rabado ragadima taya. In the name of Jesus. Finally, people of God, I just bring you a message from God that let men find their salvation, find meaning to their salvation. If you are hearing us, you don't have Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Before I pray, I want to invite you. If you can listen to us, if you can hear us from your homes, I pray in the name of Jesus that if you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, if you want to have this peace in these troubled times, I invite you just lift your hands wherever you are or in your homes. I want you to say these few words after me. You want to say, Dear Lord Jesus, from today, I ask you to forgive me. I am a sinner. I have sinned. But I ask you to forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. Raise my name from the book of death. From today, I accept you and make you the Lord and Savior of my life. Rule over my life. I give my all to you. Father, I thank you for accepting me as one of your very own. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I pray for everyone that gave his life to you. I ask the Lord, let grace abound. I pray that, Father, the Bible said that you wish and desire that all men be saved and come to the saving knowledge of your grace. I commend them into your hands. Let their soul be caught up to you. I pray that grace will find them. Cover them with your hands. The Bible said that under your feathers we shall be protected. I ask the Lord, you will keep every one of us watch over them. I secure the gates of their life. I place them in your hands. The Bible says that the hands of the Father are mighty, that whatever is kept in that hands, you are able to keep it against the day of your appearing. I speak life upon them. I pray that today, whatever blessing there is to any believer, let it come upon such people. More importantly, Daddy, I ask that you keep them. Protect them from this evil world. Protect them from the plague that has come to live with men momentarily. And I pray that your peace that passes all understanding will guide them and preserve them. In the name of Jesus, we call it done. Amen.